in expand in more capabilities, including um, being able to uh, uh, manage and hold your point cloud data. And so as we were doing that, um, basically the um, some of our customers were like, well, how do we bring this data and some of our meshes uh, into uh, our CAD software? And so we started to build a whole series of uh, plugins, native plugins within the environment to help us, uh, we're basically helping our customers to better manage uh, their point cloud data and meshes that come from Pre3D. Um, and so uh, we can show you today that first uh, plugin that's still in beta for this, uh, what we call Realty Connect for Revit. Uh, but you can expect uh, similar plugins that we'll build for other solutions uh, from the world of Autodesk to Bentley and Desso and other of these uh, uh, CAD systems that are used by our customers all over the place. Uh, maybe one first thing, Janet, if you, if you don't mind, is like, just tell us a few, in a few uh, uh, sentences, like, what's your experience right now when you do Revit by just trying to load Revit point cloud in, in Revit point cloud data? What's the experience? How painful or what are your challenges in just trying to deal with heavy point cloud data sets into Revit? I'd say. It is. It is not the most fun thing to do. Um, you know, anyone that's had to do an as-built model based on a point cloud knows that it's a it's a little bit tricky to try and do that based on points. Um, you know, I've done it both in Revit and also in programs like Plant 3D, which is not quite as good as Revit is with visualization. So I end up kind of round tripping it into Revit for that exact purpose because it's just easier to work with. Um, but it's still cumbersome with the points and um, you know as we've been building this relationship with Preview3D for other um, solutions, we were thinking, you know, there's gotta be a way to make that um, helpful on the design side. Um, and it's much easier to do back modeling and as-built models when you've got a, a solid object to model against and not just points. It's a lot more precise. Excellent, yes. And so um, a few things we're trying to address with uh, this Revit plugin. One is that uh, although we've had integrations with Revit, but it was more of at the file-based level. So ex exporting like an RCS file or an OBJ file from preview, that's been possible for a while now, uh, but it's still a very cumbersome process. You have to go into our system, export those files, load them up into uh, Revit. And if you, you, know, you didn't select the right density for your mesh or your point cloud, then you have to go back and forth. And it's a very cumbersome process. And one of the first thing we'll show you today, and maybe we can share as a fill screen, is really how to leverage our uh, level of detail system that we have into preview in uh, streamlining how you can load you know your point cloud or a mesh and we'll we'll start with just a mesh a point cloud per site and the uh, as you can see on the screen once you've connected your uh, preview 3d environment with revit is that you can say okay i want to load this like environment as a uh, point cloud and by default it's set at the lowest uh, density of the point cloud that we can supply. And uh, basically that's um, key because you don't want to start loading like a massive hundreds of gigs of data uh, and wait you know, minutes just to get a first display. So we, the idea what we've done here is to streamline the workflow by having a low density version. Uh, and then we'll show you once Phil has uh, connected properly between preview and the Revit, small little issue here. And now we've got this uh, low density uh, point cloud and it only took a few seconds to load it into uh, the environment. And already there, I think that, uh, I'm sure Janet, that's already a, a one easy imp improvement in how you're doing point cloud you know, into Revit and be able to load a very low density to just get started in loading your point cloud into Revit. So, uh, Janet, you're still there. I think your screen is. Yes, yeah, sorry. Like it's, yeah, no uh, worries. It's all good. It's a, it's a live webinar. It's part of the fun. <laughs> right. And the, and the great thing about this, which I'm sure Phil is going to get into when he starts demoing it a little bit, um, is you can have both. You can have the mesh and you can have the point cloud. You can um, just crop a small area to make really high density. You get a lot of versatility with it. And the point cloud shows up in your point cloud. Uh, you go to your visibility graphics, it actually shows up under point clouds. So you have more control over it there. So it's not just you know bringing in a point cloud. It's got some bi-directional flow with your preview 3D project. Exactly. And so, uh, for example, once we've loaded this uh, lower resolution um, point cloud is to say, okay, where maybe there's a section I want to see in the higher density. And that's where you can use basically the sections to say, oh, now I want to uh, 
take a smaller portion of this and now that part I want it to be uh, loaded and that's why we have this uh, clip scan feature and you can select a higher density for that one. And then, well, of course, it will take a few uh, extra steps here, but uh, it allows you to really create sort of a mosaic of your point cloud with various densities uh, into your environment. So where there you, you need to have a higher density for certain reason, and here, so this this portion is more dense and will bring the rest of the point cloud. Uh, and now you're going to see uh, this you know, blend of like low res point cloud for other places, but one area that's very dense on this specific point cloud if you want to remodel that specific area, for example. And I'm guessing that that just what we're just showing here, that would be a lot more cumbersome to do this in, into Revit without the plugin that we've done, right, Janet? Yeah, I mean, if you you could always crop down with the section box just like we're doing right now. Um, but if you wanted to kind of overlay things, it can get a little bit complicated. Um, you know, you're talking maybe having to create multiple views where here we're just dealing with the one 3D view that we can, you know, hide the scene or show the entire scene and have, again, more versatility without having to create extra parts of our project. Um, exactly. you know, and a lot of times the biggest the biggest problem we have is computing power. I mean, Revit's great. It runs pretty good on most systems. Um, but as soon as you put in some of these big point clouds, it becomes really hard to navigate. So just being able to section off a small portion, you know, like I said, if you're doing an as-built model um, or doing any sort of back modeling, just makes it a lot more usable. Exactly. And, and again, it's the focus is to make it a lot more uh, efficient and streamlined to get to where you, you want to do it because your, your job is not to load point cloud, it's to do something with it. So making it easier for you to get to the actual work that you need to be doing. So one thing next we want to show you, and again, by the way, if there's any questions uh, in the attendance, uh, feel free to uh, ask your questions in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So another thing we've done is like, uh, so that's great. Are you here? We're showing like more efficient work ways to bring in the point cloud or, or, or the mesh into the environment. But often we've heard feedback from uh, engineering uh, folks that, okay, well, I now I need to work on my CAD design, which is great. But you know, what about all these you know surrounding environments? Like, if I have like specific you know uh, assets that I, I still need to model because I don't have them, I only have it in a point cloud version. And so, what we've been building with this plugin into into our reality plan system is that with Preview three D now you can actually create uh, specific uh, assets, uh, what we call reality assets. And so, in a few seconds here, Phil will basically create uh, in a few seconds this asset uh, area here. Uh, and what's nice is that uh, if I need this as a reference asset into my uh, Revit environment, uh, instead of just like collecting, you know, selecting clip areas, which you need to really know what you're what you're looking for and what you're doing here, we'll define a placeholder for this uh, specific asset. And within the Revit plugin, we'll basically uh, be able to, uh, by using the name of this you know, created asset that Phil will name in a few seconds, selectively pick that asset into the Revit plugin. It's basically a live link between the, between the two things, right? So right now we just created this asset here and Phil was gonna jump back into Revit and you see that there's a uh, asset, load asset option. And suddenly this asset we just created on preview in a few seconds ago, we can then decide, can we load this specific meshed asset? So now we're starting to combine point cloud, meshes, segmented assets in just a few clicks. And now we're going to go into here and we can zoom in to the specific asset. And now you've got this mesh asset, either as you want to use it for reverse engineering or as a reference asset into your, your design. And of course, all the imagery on the textures and everything is brought in here. And again, you didn't have to do any file import, export. It's all transparent within the uh, uh, platform to platform integration that we've done between uh, Preview 3D and Revit and really makes it a lot more streamlined. Uh, and it creates basically this uh, generic asset into your uh, family uh, hierarchy into Revit. Probably my favorite part about um, this plugin right now is you know, as we go along, and it depends on your application, but a lot of people are asking what becomes you know, the actual model? Is it the deliverable? Is it the piece of paper? Or is it the point cloud? So this really kind of marries those things together because here we have a point cloud where we can harvest the information of it and make an asset out of it. So those, um, the asset that Phil just brought in, 
those are actually generic models. So you can edit those families, you can change their category, you can add parameters to them. Um, they are actual usable families. So it's not like you're just bringing in a chunk of the point cloud, you're actually creating a family from it. Um, you know, for our line of work, where a lot of times we are, you know, trying to make things fit, seeing if we can actually get them in and out, we're moving lines of equipment. This becomes pretty important because we may not be getting new equipment. We may be using something that's already there. So if we have a scan of it and we can make an asset in preview 3D and then bring that into our design, it's very helpful for us. Exactly. And so the feedback we've been getting a lot of with uh, some of our better testers is exactly that, that this is a huge time saver because now you're working in an asset based environment. You're not just working with points in the point cloud. You're really you know, dealing with the assets that you either want to bring as a reference or the assets that you want to remodel in, the, in Revit. And like I said, this is a one of many of these uh, plugins we'll be announcing in the next uh, several months. So you can expect that we'll have the same thing for, you mentioned earlier, John, at the Plan 3D, we're also working on the Plan 3D uh, plugin to bring that same type of capabilities to AutoCAD. Um, another thing I was going to mention is, you know, I, you know, as, as a longtime Revit user, you know, when I was kind of testing this out, you know, I had a lot of questions internally that I was kind of working through. And one thing was, you know, this is a point cloud, it's a mesh, it's now an asset, you know, what does the file size look like on that family, you know, being as though it's got such realistic graphics and it's created from a mesh. Um, so if you've got an out of the box, let's say a pump, and you've got one that you've created, um, asset you've created from preview 3D, if it's, you know, 600k, then it might be double that when you bring it in as a mesh asset. So it's really not that significant, especially if it's yep. not something like a light fixture where you're copying it over and over, you know, hundreds of times. So um, I expect it to be a lot bigger and it really wasn't. So that's, again, makes it more usable. Absolutely. And like I said before, like you can control the uh, density of the assets you're bringing in. So we can, for specific assets that you just need a really crude version of it on your mesh, then you can load a very low res version or select a one specifically with higher density. So here, for example, if your field is loading a very low res version of it, it's not going to be as nice as the previous instance, but it's going to allow you to, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a small bug into the better version. Uh, and now we're going to have a low res version of that asset. Is there something wrong? And we can still bring demo. these into Plant 3D. We can we can take the stuff yeah, that's yeah. in Revit as a family, and we can export that. I do that all the time with a lot of vendor stuff, anyway. So now that I can use this asset from the scan essentially in Revit, I yeah. can also export that out to the designers that are still using Plant 3D and give them something yeah. to start from. Exactly. So yeah, maybe they'll bug here. It's a better version that we're showing. So you know, it's uh, we're flying with fire. So sometimes things don't work as well as we want it to be. But uh, uh, I think people got the the, the 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 gift of it. Any questions on the audience? It's been awfully quiet, and uh, I always like to have some questions from the audience about you know anything we can answer. Uh, you know, definitely we have uh, Janet here as well that has a lot of experience in, in working with Pretty 3D and Revit. So if you have any questions about workflows uh, between the two, and not just beyond, and not just specifically the plugin, we're also open to these uh, discussions as well. If there, if you want to ask them. It's just this uh, perfect I, already, guys. So it's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people are in awe. They don't know what to, don't know questions to ask. Uh, maybe the one question that some people might have is like, yeah, when is this going to be available? Right now, uh, if you want to be part of the better program for testing this, we're definitely accepting more companies to test this. Uh, the release of it will come very soon. We're definitely uh, very happy about uh, the testing we've been doing on the plugins. We really are promising, still fixing a small, a few, small amount of quirks, uh, but it's already been very exciting to see the initial uh, testing that our customers like Janet have been doing on this uh, for the past uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, we've tried other Got plugins it. before. We've tried, um, you know, ones where it takes the point cloud and converts it into actual, you know, native Revit pipes and things like that. But it doesn't, it takes a while and it doesn't work that well. Um, mm -hmm. So we end up kind of back modeling it anyways. And this is something we've been kind of dreaming about for a while, especially considering we scan absolutely every job. So uh, there's always back modeling involved. And this is just an yeah. easier way for us to do it. Um, you know, I've, I've run it past some of my designers and everybody agrees that for at least what we do, that this makes it so much easier to back model. Um, and it's, you know, you're actually looking at the point cloud in meshed form. So it's just a much easier go by than the point cloud or, mm -hmm. you know, exporting something from another program and having to fine tune it because the program still can't quite get it right. And you end up having to verify it anyways. Exactly. 
Well, uh, we're not getting any questions uh, per se, but that's okay. I mean, definitely we'll, we'll, we're recording this and so we'll make it available afterwards. Uh, any last I items you want to mention, Janet, on uh, how you're seeing this work? Uh, obviously, we're taking a lot of your feedback uh, for a while now on how we can improve engineering workflows. I think this is one great example. Uh, and maybe the one last comment from you, Janet, about how you can see this improving your, your life uh, at uh, Progressive Design. Well, I think, you know, it, it's what you guys have already put together just as the starting point is going to be super, super helpful for us to integrate into our design process instead of something that's, you know, we're scanning it and we're using it for presentation purposes. We're um, doing takeoff kind of stuff. I think this is actually going to integrate this tool into the design process. So where I kind of see it going is, you know, more bi-directional information, um, you know, assets in preview 3D, actually being able to um, have bi-directional info from the assets in the design model. I think there are a ton of possibilities here. So I'm just very impressed with what you guys have done so far. And I see this being integral to our workflow, um, you know, especially in industrial as we go forward. So I'm really excited to expose it to some other people and kind of um, sing its praise because I think it's going to be very helpful as the industry is going in this direction where everything is scanned. And, you know, a lot of times you're yeah. having to build off of that. So um, it's it's an excellent start, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Excellent. Really great to hear that. And so uh, I guess we'll make it a shorter uh, webinar, but very valuable and great uh, input. You know, again, Janet, I want to thank you so much for being part of this webinar today. Uh, it's great to hear the customer perspective of what we're doing. Like, you know, it's great that we do webinars sometimes by ourselves, but we're not using the, this stuff per se. So getting your feedback is extremely valuable. And I want to thank you for this uh, this time today. And if anybody wants to know more about our Reality Connect plugin for Revit or other work we're doing in this area of bringing uh, reality captured data better into your CAD workflows, feel free to contact us. Uh, we're always loving to talk to customers. Uh, actually, I'm in a trade show uh, this week in oil and gas in Texas. That's why you see the uh, palm tree behind me and some of the uh, blue sky in, in behind me. Uh, and so thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. And we'll talk very soon. Thanks, guys.